Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. And uh, no, it's not the Christmas special, it's the Thanksgiving special. Yeah, yeah, I, I know the Christmas tree's already up in the house, but it's pretty, right? It should be, I mean, got some cool stuff there. Anyway, no need for the green screen, kind of going old school, kind of old school, not quite. I've got the three lights going. Um, they, the, it looks pretty good on the camera. It might be a little dim, but I, but I also notice that sometimes, especially with these white labels, that if the lights are too bright, especially if I don't have the green screen going, that uh, things get washed out a lot. So um, anyway, we are going to do uh, three wines today, and uh, they're, they're fairly, well, two of them are fairly kind of, I would say, traditional for Thanksgiving, and then the third one is a wine that you may not think about doing for Thanksgiving. All right, so um, it's 4.17 in the morning on a Saturday night. That's why I'm dressed so dapper. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I just came home, well, just came home from work, been home for a little while, but uh, getting everything set up and all that good stuff. So let's get into the vino here. So um, I bought this, and you probably couldn't see it on the bottle, but it's still kind of dusty. Uh, I bought this over at Specs, and I was looking for um, I was looking for a white Burgundy, and I have to admit that Burgundy's Burgundy in general, whether it's red or white, uh, I just don't have a whole lot of experience with. And um, in our sommelier study group, which I'm now a member of, and apparently I was a member of it in the summer and didn't realize it, but uh, it was just me and a couple of people. Now it's like the full blown version. Um, we were talking about white Burgundy. We had some and. Uh, matter of fact, I meant to go buy this apparently amazing white burgundy for $30. So uh, hopefully they haven't sold out yet. But on Monday, I will try to get it. But anyway, so we were talking about it, and I decided I wanted to get a Chardonnay. So if you didn't already know that, a white burgundy is a Chardonnay. So let's get right into this. This is the Christophe uh, Cordier Macon Vieles Vignes. Okay, that means old vines. Uh, this is... Uh, from the Macon area of Burgundy, and uh, specifically this part is uh, well in the Macanay, so a little bit not south, but in the southern, yeah, southern part of Burgundy, and the domain, because they don't call them chateaus. Uh, and it's kind of funny how Burgundy and Bordeaux are; they've got some big differences in how they kind of do things. But anyway, their domain is uh, in the area called. Uh, Puy Fuise. I think I said it just right. Not Puy Fuise, okay? Puy Fuise. All right? I kind of said it kind of how the little pronunciation online said it. Uh, <coughs> um, so anyway, um, that that name should sound familiar because especially like in the 70s and 80s, that was like, ooh, Puy Fuise. Okay, we're going to have that great. And, it, you know, it's kind of considered, you know, really typically pretty good quality wine that you don't have to spend an arm and a leg for it, uh, like you would for the Cote de Bone, which is a little bit farther north in the Burgundy area. 100% Chardonnay. Uh, these Chardonnays from the actual Burgundy area, rather than Chablis, see oak, as they would say. So in other words, uh, there is there is going to be oak influence on the wine, whereas in Chablis, there is there should be zero oak. If there is any oak, it's called neutral oak, uh, which means it doesn't impart any type of characteristics to it. It's just uh, a vessel, basically, rather than stainless steel. Um, outside of that, I don't really know much about um, about this particular domain, um, but it is from the Robert Catcher selection, so they have quite a few wines in their portfolio. And um, let's see, what else is there on there? That's it. Let's uh, let's dive into it. All right, first of all, color pretty good. Oh man. 
Probably should have gotten a cleaner glass, all spotty. The next one will get the uh, we'll get the cleaner glass. I don't know if you can see. You probably can see it. Sorry about that. Must have been a, must have been the glass I didn't dry after having it. Just let it air dry. Not so good. Looks like it's just on the outside. Anyway, enough for that. Um, as far as the wine itself, uh, definitely clear. Um, bit of a golden color to it. Now I. Oh, I'm sorry. I paid at Specs, which you've already seen it, $10.89. Um, no, that's not what I paid. That's what I paid for one of the other wines. I paid $19.49 for this. Okay, there we go. Bought some other wines at Specs too. But anyway, um, it's clear. It's got a nice little golden color. Um, it's actually almost. Didn't realize that when I put this shirt on it. I don't know, 14 hours ago. Um, nice color. Let's get right into the nose. Now the first, first thing I got was a bit of an apple flavor, but then I was getting that, that what I call melon and cantaloupe and, and melon rind and, and like ripe ripe melon or cantaloupe and I guess you know, like where the seeds are and I guess so far in our in our study group nobody's kind of said that they they say other things so that that's totally a uh, how we all have different backgrounds in, in what we do or, or not what we do but how we think about things you know aromas and tastes and what you know connections we have but there there's there's a I don't want to call it funk because typically when I talk about funk, I'm talking about like barnyard type of stuff, but there is something a little different about it. Partially, I, I thought that might be chemical, but not in a bad way. Because you know, if, if I get that, there's a the, the potential flaw or fault. But there, there is kind of a funk to it. A slight earthiness, which I wasn't necessarily expecting. But there is something else that I really can't get my finger on. And I'm not going to spend too much more time on that. Let's get into the wine itself. Let's taste that. There definitely is that that apple-y, green apple flavor to it, and all, you know those um, those hard candy, the the rectangular ones, the apple whatever they are. I don't know. There's a bit of that type of very heavy, and even like the little. I, mean, I meant the rectangular. I mean those long ones, like the planks. But even like like the, the the small hard candy, green you know apple hard candy. There's there's a bit of that, and not in that. Not in that processed way, like I'll talk about, like there's, there's the raspberry candy where you're you're really smelling or tasting the the candy coating around it. This is just that pure green apple candy flavor, and it's it, it's just a hint. I don't make it want to sound like I'm tasting green candy, green apple candy, but it reminds me of that intensity. And I do have to say one thing when I first opened this bottle. It's very aromatic, okay? Just right off the bat, it, it's coming right out of the bottle. Um, but there was, there's also a hint of of bakery pastry, almost like like you know, like opening up a, a champagne. Which, coincidentally enough, Chardonnay is one of the grapes for champagne, right? So there's a bit of that to it, okay? Like they could have made this into a sparkling wine. I mean, they obviously could, but. It could have maybe been a sparkling wine. It's not very acidic. Um, it's got a bit of acid too, but not highly acidic. I was expecting a little more of that. Uh, did I mention this was 2009? I don't know. It'll be, it would have, or you would have already seen the, the vintage. Um, and it's 13% 
No, 13.5% alcohol. Yes? Yeah, 13.5. A little hot. And I think I could, you know, I felt like I'd, I could really feel the, the alcohol in it. But um, I mean, it's nothing outrageous. But um, I think it's an excellent wine. Uh, I mean, I'd give it a solid high 80s. I, I'd probably even give it a. I mean, I really like the wine. And you know me and Chardonnay, sometimes we're not the best of friends. But this is the style. I mean, I know Chablis is more my style because there's zero oak treatment, but this does see a little bit of oak. And I thought it said in here that um, it, it didn't seem like it was really heavily oaked, but there's something in here I can really tell. Solid effort, and I, I, I'd give it an 89. Um, chill it a little bit. It'll kind of help that alcohol, um, maybe increase a bit of acid to it, and maybe we might bring out some more of the flavors, but excellent, 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 excellent. I mean, $20, so it's not cheap, um, but it was, it's still considered a value wine, and um, I absolutely totally recommend it. Certainly. Well, um, Let's move on to the next one. Before we do that, uh, just I seem to always do this at the very end and, and looking at my stats, it doesn't seem like everybody watches all the way to the end. But um, as we're getting ready to go to the, go to the next um, wine, just want to remind everybody, stop by the website, click the links above to friend me up, click the links over here, you can send a donation. Okay, so just to get that out of the way. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. All right, and we're back with our next wine. Um, I bought this one also uh, from Specs, and um, again, another traditional wine. This is the 2009 Kings Ridge Oregon Pinot Noir. Bought this for $14.99 at Specs. Now, I, I bought this because the salesperson recommended it. Now, I was in Specs. This is actually right before I went to go see Skyfall. If you haven't seen Skyfall, you got to see this movie. Dude, I'm serious. It was probably, it's going to be, I'd say, in my top five uh, for uh, Bond movies. When was the Chuzak movie they always had top fives? Um, High Fidelity? Pff, fabulous movie right there, too. Yeah, I just said fabulous. Fantastic movie. Um, anyway, so I was walking around and I was just trying to figure out what I wanted to buy. And... You know, they, they come up to you, hey, can, do, I, do you need anything? How are you finding everything okay? And I usually go, yeah, yeah, I'm just looking. And it's not that I don't want their help, but I think that I know more than they do because I guarantee you, as far as their, the wines that they sell, I probably don't know more than they do. They probably know that way better than I do. But a lot of times, it's kind of like, I even told it to one of the people. It's like being a bookstore. You know what those are, right? Remember? Um, There's like one called Bookstop, I think. I used to go to that one all the time in Austin. I think it was called Bookstop. I don't know. I used to love going in there. Just walk around, just look at the books. Anyway, pull one out and take a look at it, read a little bit, put it away. But um, I, I, I kind of, you know, like, you know, like wine library, right? Um, it, it reminds me of being in a bookstore. So anyway, uh, I decided, well, I'm going to get a Pinot Noir. And I decided instead of trying to get a Burgundy, which I already had a white Burgundy, I didn't want to just totally stay in Burgundy, uh, but I wanted Pinot Noir. Okay, so where am I going to go? Well, at this point, I'm probably going to go to America. And I just did Oregon Pinot Noir at our study group uh, a couple weeks ago. And I decided I wanted to do another one. I had brought one, and uh, my, my friend Ceci had bought one. And um, I want to try one more. And I like Oregon Pinot Noir. It's similar to what Burgundy is. And that's kind of the style I like because it's got the funk and all that good stuff. Um, whereas California Pinot Noir, I don't necessarily it's not bad it just isn't really my style so um i want to try another one and i just asked the guy who's kind of stocking things like do you have anything here under 20 or actually in the 15 dollar range pinot noir i didn't even say oregon it says pinot noir 15 dollars that you recommend and he went right to this bottle then he went to another one that was like 18 bucks he said it was really good but um i want to stick with with the 15 dollar one so this is uh, called Kings Ridge. It is uh, Union Wine Company out of Oregon is who produces it. 
And outside of that, there really isn't much to know about this. Um, if you go to our story on their website, you get pretty much marketing fluff, and it's uh, very vague and more about Oregon rather than the company, and there's really only one sentence <laughs> about the company. Um, I mean, specifically, it says, we named our company a union to honor these diversities. They're talking about like Oregon. Oregon's kind of like, you know, Austin, except it's a whole state of just like everybody in the world just like kind of lives in the area and you got you definitely have the opposites attract um, or as they say opposites shake hands uh, anyway named uh, to honor these diversities and bring together the spirit and character of Oregon in a way that you can put on your table every day so in other words there really isn't much to know I don't know how long the place has been around uh, they've definitely had at least vintages back to I think 2006 um, this vintage is not on their website 2009 at least i don't remember it being on there as i'm waiting for yeah for some reason 2009's not on it but the 2010 is don't know why anyway outside of that it's 100 percent pinot noir which typically oregon pinot noirs are 100 percent, which is nice so let's go right into it so it's got a very typical 100% Pinot Noir color. You can see your hand through it. Um, not like, you know, Pinot Noirs that's got Syrah or any other type of extra grape in there to give it a little more color and oomph. I'm kind of surprised this is just, ta-da, there you go. Yeah, they have, uh, for, so for Kings Ridge, they only have 2010 Pinot Noir uh, on there. And they also have two other called Underwood and Alchemist. And they have 2009 back there. So company's been around maybe three years, four years, who knows? Anyway, color, typical, uh, fairly pale, not pale, but fairly see-through, um, very see-through actually. Not bad, all right, let's check it out. I have to admit, I did kind of stick my nose in each of these wines after I opened them. I don't normally do that, but because the Chardonnay was so aromatic, I decided to just kind of do it with the other two. So it doesn't have, I mean, it has a typical Pinot Noir aroma to it. Um, you get a bit of that cherry to it. Um, there, there's this aroma that I get out of wines a lot that I, I tend to associate with, I say, barbecue sauce or sauce, but it's not really that. This, it's more of a chemical type of thing. Again, there's that chemical meme. But it's, it's probably more of the wood, I'm gonna say. Uh, probably wood aspect that's coming through. Because I, I would probably officially characterize, characterize it as either minerality or wood. But that's about it on the nose. It's sound, there's nothing wrong with the nose. Let's, uh, let's taste it. It's a bit bolder than I was actually expecting. Um, I feel it's got really high acid to it, but I also really feel like I'm tasting wood. Like I, I did bite into the, you know, the side of a tree. But I get this fruit, you know, I get definitely some good fruit out of it. Still more of that cherry, maybe some strawberry out of it. Um, It's definitely pleasant. Um, getting the getting the second sip out of it, I think it, it kind of developed a little bit more. Um, interesting thing, uh, it, this is a screw cap. Uh, at my day job, general manager put it in my head that the first taste, you, first sip you get out of a screw cap is metallic. Uh, I don't really believe him, but we tasted a wine and 
I felt like I did get a little bit of like like aluminum foil, like at the edge of your teeth type of thing. But anyway, I don't get that with this one. But I did get a difference between the first sip and then sipping again. I really find that the wine, I won't say it's one dimensional because it's not, but pretty much all I get, I get that cherry and I feel like I get a decent amount of earthiness out of it, wood, but not that, not like an earthiness of like forest floor or under the, you know, or under, you know, under the dirt or dirt or barnyard or anything like that. Um, it's very subtle as far as the earthiness, but it's there. I do feel like I get a, not a whole bunch of wood, but I get a little bit of wood out of it. Probably a little more than I would personally prefer, but it's not a bad wine. I don't think it's a badly, I don't think it's a poorly made wine. I think it's well made. I think there's a balance to it. I think it's a wine that if I let it breathe a little bit and I came back to this an hour from now in the glass or decanted it, I think it would really open up. I think it would, because it feels like it's developing already. And I think this is this is why Pinot Noir and I, kind of like Chardonnay and I, don't always see eye to eye, because a lot of times I think with Pinot Noir, I have to work to really get the enjoyment out of it. Um, okay, see so now, now, poured some more. Again, this could be the screw cap thing, and part of it could be in my head, but now that I, and some, but not just screw cap, but I've had it happen where I pour some more, and it, like the first initial pour, you get maybe not everything great out of it, maybe the flavors and the aromas are muted, then you, you let that go out, and then you pour some more in there, and things are better. I got more funk. So I, I got a little, not a whole bunch of barnyard, but a little bit more barnyard. So now I'm starting to get a little more interested in it. I'm glad I poured some more instead of just using the first sip as or the first pour as my uh, as my uh, judgment. It's definitely improved. I don't think it's hugely dramatically improved, but it's 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 improving. I think this is a wine. Like I said, if I let it decant for a while, I think the I think the I think it will open up some more. With that said, I'm, I'm still going to give it. I'm going to give it like an 86, which I, I'm. I'm. I don't want to give it an 86. And I, I 86 is a good score, by the way. Okay, it's not a bad score, especially if you watch my show and if you get in the high 80s or if you get above an 85, you're you're, you're considered pretty decent. You know, some people would score it three or four or five points higher. So um, I think there's more potential in the wine and, and, and that's why I don't want to give it an 86. I think it probably would score higher if I decanted it. I think the flavors are melding better. I'm, you know, I'm going to go higher. I'm going to go 88 on it. I think it's developing. I think it's going to be a really good wine if I let it sit out. It's a recommend, uh, fifteen dollars. Um, but then again, you know, I, I'm still searching for Pinot Noir. A lot of times doesn't really wow me, and I know it's because it's supposed to be more of a subtle and elegant wine. But definitely, if you see it, I recommend it. And like I said, I think you should just let it breathe, decant it, let it breathe, or just let it sit in your glass for a while and let it let it uh, develop. All right, um, again, hit the links. Boom, boom, boom. Let's move on to the last wine. All right, we're back for wine number three. Now, I bought this at Max's, Max's Wine Dive here in San Antonio. And uh, I was there, um, again, after a study group having lunch. Was this? Yeah, this was lunch. I was having lunch and uh, I was talking to the bartender and a couple of the other staff. And I was like, hey, you know, I won't need a wine for Thanksgiving that, you know, what would you pair with it? And you know what I like about them is that they they sometimes have you know a different way of looking at things, 
And uh, it's kind of like, you know, we go to World Market for wine. They have it kind of an eclectic selection, or it seems eclectic to me, or at least it did. Uh, I'm not saying it's changed, but I guess now I've gone to it enough times, it doesn't, I guess, seem as eclectic as it used to be. But I think it's just, what it is, is if they don't have the same, they don't have the same stuff you're going to find at the grocery store. And that's what I like about it. You get, a, you get like a different philosophy, I guess, in, in, in wine. At least you're not getting the same old tired labels, let's put it that way. So, um, and Max is also, they, they seek out stuff that's a little bit different. Um, again, I, I, I don't think you're going to find KJ Chardonnay there, okay? And, and that, it was just the first big name to come up, and I'm not trying to disparage KJ Chardonnay. Um, but it's just not something you're going to find there. Anyway, so, uh, of course, they go, how about this, how about this, how about this? And I keep going, I've had it, I've had it, I've had it. And the person that was helping me, I, I'm there during the day, and I'm never there during the day. So she does... She's maybe seen me around at night, but she's never taken care of me. So I, I had to go through the whole thing. Well, I don't ever have a wine ahead of time. Or I think it's only been a, like, well, a handful of times I've, I've actually had the wine in that vintage before. Usually I've never even had the wine. Forget the vintage uh, on the show. So anyway, they, uh, they picked up this one. So I said, I've never seen this label before. I said, therefore, I've never had it. So this is the 2009, yeah, 2009, uh, Termes. Uh, this is a Tinto, dang it, Tinto de Toro. That's right, Tinto de Toro. It is a synonym or a, I won't say a clone, but a synonym of Tempranillo out of Spain. This is in the northwest part of Spain in an area called Numantia which uh, if you go to the website, they talk about that it was been making wine for 2,000 years and they were like, they were sieged by the Romans for 100 years, resisting, you know, the takeover. Oh, the, the lights are dimming. Hold on. We're going to see what we can fix this. I'm going to crank up the lights just a little bit. Sorry. Crank up the lights just a little bit. Of course, now we're going to have to you're seeing all the lighting stuff happening. Hopefully I didn't block the thing. And hopefully I didn't crank these up too much. But I definitely didn't want... Right, this might be a little bit too bright now, but... Sorry. One man band and all that. God, they are. They do look a lot brighter right now. But it is a dark label, so you probably can see it a little bit better. Anyway, so northwest part of Spain. Hot summers, cold winters. And they were a holdout for 100 years, for a century, from the Roman invaders. All right. So Tempranillo. Uh, Tempranillo has a, a bunch of different names out there in, in Spain. Um, this is just one of them, Tinta. Tinto de Toro. Yes, Tinta de Toro. So Tempranillo, who would think who would have thunk of having a Tempranillo with uh, your turkey or whatever? Oh, by the way, $29.99 at Max's Wine Dive. Did I mention I, I you know Tempranillo and I do get along? Yeah. I don't put in the class of Company Franc and Zinfandel. But uh, it's definitely a, a type of wine that I really do like. I think most, I think we need to have more of it. So, I right, first off, so when you think Spain and Tempranillo, where do you think? Rioja, right? So right there, I, I smell the vanilla, okay, which means American oak. Now, I can't tell you for sure if they use American oak because just like all the other websites... Oh, I never noticed that. The little timer thing is actually in the menu bar. Never noticed that before. Just like everything else, uh, all the other wines, very little information as to what is going on with these wines. But Rioja is known for aging their wines, you know, for having uh, aging wines in American oak. So I, I feel there's American oak definitely on this. So you get that vanilla. I'm not going to say I get the suntan oil or the coconut, which is also 
um, indicative of American oak. But I do get uh, a little creaminess and a pie aspect. God, I really cranked those lights up, didn't I? I don't want to say, well, it's more of a raspberry. Yeah, not cherry. More of a raspberry fruit to it. Maybe even blue fruit. Let's check it out. One of those wines, first thing I get is, is structure or mouthfeel. Tannins, medium plus, if not high. Well, medium plus. Really attacks the palate. I also get the alcohol. And, and that's confirmed by looking at the back label. It's 15%. Really get the alcohol on it. Um, one way to kind of t test alcohol is like to breathe out real quick. But I didn't really get enough in, in here. You, you get just a little bit more, not necessarily swallow, but into the back of your, back of your throat. And you can like breathe out. It's not really bad. Honestly, I think what it is is that I get the tannins, but I also get, it feels like it's very high in acid, which is confusing because this is a high, this is a hot climate and I shouldn't have high acid. So I think it's really the alcohol. I think the alcohol is really coming through. Um, I'm not going to say it's imbalanced, but it's noticeable. However, I still get that fruit forward. I do get the fruit forward. I still get very much the same thing on the, on the nose as I do in the palate. Um, kind of that raspberry, more like a blueberry, really, blueberry pie, blueberry, you know, Pop-Tart type of thing. You know, you got the vanilla icing, you got the little pastry thing, and the blueberry, and the dum dum dum. It's pleasant. Um, I think it was chilled a little bit, like, you know, what red wine is supposed to be chilled, right? Like 60, what, five degrees, instead of 72 which is what it is in the house, ish. Not that big of a deal. Um, but I think if it, was, if it was slightly chilled, it might help out with that alcohol. I also feel like it's calming down a little bit. And then we've got through three wines and I haven't even talked about pairing with anything for Thanksgiving. What an idiot. Okay. So, Let's do this wine first, okay? Turkey, sure, you can pair it with turkey. Um, if you if you had like a can, like a like a, a honey baked ham, I think this would be fabulous with it. Okay, there's that fabulous word again. Um, so I think with the honey would really combine really well with that with the blueberry, the berry aspects. Okay, the fruit stuff. I think that would be an incredible pairing. Uh, you got your cranberry sauce. Um, I'm not a big cranberry sauce type of person, but you know I, I know what cranberries taste like, um, so I think it would really go well with that. Um, you could even pair it probably with some chocolate desserts. Think about think about chocolate covered blueberries and raspberries, and cranberries. Maybe you get a little cranberry out of it. Hmm. Oh. Once I spit pretty poorly out of there. So I mean, this is a, this would be a really good wine. You could pair with some stuff, especially with that fruit stuff. Um, turkey, maybe not so much. I would say the King's Ridge and your turkey, or even if you were having something like um, uh, duck or lamb, for sure, a little lamb action. Uh, what else? You could do chicken. Oh man, it's really starting to get funky up in here. Oh, 
oh, it's calming down. It's developing. I'm glad I went back to this wine for sure. 80, 89 on this. Uh, this 80, I'm going to go 88, 80, yeah, 88, 89 on the Pinot Noir. This Pinot Noir really has, that's why I want to go back to it. It's calming down. Of course, also I went from this, it's a little bit hot, to this not as hot, but I don't really taste that 13% anymore. Yeah, it's really, it's more, it feels like it's more balanced. And then the Chardonnay, now we're, we talked about having green bean casserole at the house, and, and the Chardonnay, I think this would go pretty well with that. Um, but nothing else, like if you have any chicken dishes, uh, if you're doing some cheeses, um, antipasta, antipasti, sorry. If you're doing like some your your initial salad, maybe even like a fruit type of salad. If you if you gotten some fruit involved, like it's just apples. I mean, apples for days now on this wine. So another example of wine developing a little bit over time. There you go. Thanksgiving, traditional two wines, and then something not as traditional as you would normally think. Um, but I think it would go really great with, with some of your stuff. Like I said, if you, if you got the turkey, Pinot Noir probably for really for the turkey. Um, but if you're doing, uh, if you're doing like your ham, especially, you know, the, the honey ham, the candied ham type of thing, that would be great with it. Um, and then of course your sauces, I think if you had the cranberry sauce and that type of stuff. Um, if you're, you know, the potato, if you had like au gratin potatoes, uh, any well, these I think would really go well with with just the flavor profile of that. Even, even actually, honestly, this would probably be decent too. Um, all three wines are recommend buys. Uh, yes, this is a premium wine, so thirty bucks, but it's a special occasion. Why not splurge a little bit? And that's why I didn't have any ten dollar wines. Um, sorry, as always, stop by the website, click the links above the front. The click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button. Send a few ducats my way. Um, leave some comments below. I forgot to mention that in the first segment. Leave comments below. And uh, let's see what else. Rest of the year. Okay, not much coming the rest of the year. I do have uh, a Skype interview that I'm planning with uh, the Biltmore Estate. And uh, we just have to nail down a date to do it. So look for that in December sometime. Uh, I'm thinking the third week of December that will actually be up on the website. Uh, so I'll probably do it the second week of December. Um, outside of that, I've got nothing else officially planned other than my usual Christmas and New Year's specials. Um, basically, for the next two to three weeks, you're not going to see any videos pop up. Um, but I might be, do but I do plan to produce content. Um, I've got a three-day off in a row stretch coming. Thinking about hitting some Texas wineries. Just getting some content from that. Um, and I've got some ideas for next year. So we'll go over the next year stuff later the rest of this year. I think I'll do an actual written blog post about that. That's going to wrap it up. Uh, do thank you for stopping by, as always. Uh, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time.